Today, we have with us Sarah Roy. Uh, Sarah Roy serves as the principal at Lake Cumberland Regional College and Workforce Center in Russell Springs, Kentucky. This is her 22nd year in education. She's taught middle school and high school and also served as high school curriculum specialist, instructional coach prior to becoming principal. This is her sixth year as an ATC principal. She's passionate about the work of CTE. I love the impact these programs can have on students and their future plans. It truly is the most rewarding position I have worked in during my time in education. Um, so we're going to welcome Sarah. And um, if y'all have questions or anything, you can pop them in the chat and I'll do my best to help you. Or if it's something for Sarah, she will um, see that when it comes up on her screen. So, all right, take it away, Sarah. Okay. Well, um, it's still technically morning here at uh, in Russell County. It's still central time. So I guess I can say uh, good after morning to some people. Um, but um, yeah, I'm glad to, I'm, I'm excited to share with you just a, a small initiative that our school has started this year. Um, hope something that we're hoping to see some great benefits from that we're already starting to see benefits from. Um, so many of you have probably uh, maybe your own district or your school already uses something similar, whether it be portrait of a learner, profile of a student, um, profile of a, a certain you know, school district student, profile of a graduate, something along that term. So that's kind of where this originated in that we um, wanted to come up with something that as an end goal for our students at our school. So uh, just as we get started, I hope everyone can see, I think she said everyone could see my screen, but um, she's already shared that with you. And I do um, definitely say that in all my years, this is the part of uh, my career that I feel, um, I guess the most value in as far as I directly see the connections that these students are making each and every day with their teachers. So this is a CTE focused, um, initiative, but I think it, you know, could be beneficial to any of you, depending on where you are and what aspect that you work in. So a little bit about our school. Um, like she said, we are in Russell County. We are a Kentucky Tech Area Technology Center, and we service Adair and Russell County high school students. Um, this initiative came up just in direct response to um regional and local advisory members. Uh, you know, we have those meetings routinely where we're in staying in contact with stakeholders in our community, our business and industry partners. And this is something that was just a common theme that we were seeing um, that students needed and that was the employability aspect. And so that's kind of where this originated. And so this summer, whenever we came back to school, um, we met as a staff, and that's kind of how we began to develop this uh, portrait of an LC RCWC student. And that's a whole mouthful to say. Lake Cumberland Regional College and Workforce Center is a lot to say. So uh, that's that's where the profile of the LC RCWC student came from. So I'm just kind of going to share a little bit about for you in the um, the the breakout grid. I put all the documents that I'm going to use today, which you know, it's just a slideshow and then the actual documents themselves that we use with our students. So those should be available for you to view at any time if you want to go back and look at those. So uh, just a little bit about our school. We are very fortunate that we are in a brand new facility. Um, we're in our third year and there's a small picture there of it. And these are the programs that we currently uh, have within our building. So you can see those there. We are connected to our main feeder, and like I said, just a state-of-the-art facility, uh, but mo everything that we have inside of our, 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 of our building is all career and technical education. Um, so, like I said, in response to just local and regional stakeholders, we just saw the need to address the lack um, of just employability soft skills um, that they were seeing in the workforce. And um, it seemed like meeting after meeting, we were continuously being told by our stakeholders, these kids know the content, they know the skills, they know this, but we need them to be able to know what it means to be a good employee, know the things that it takes, 
to maintain a job, know the things that it maintains to, to earn raises, know the, you know, those types of things. And um, so, you know, we had two choices. We felt like we could keep having those meetings and kind of keep having those same conversations, or we could decide uh, what is something we can do on our end to try to address this before students leave us. You know, we can kind of keep kicking the can down and we can keep having the same meetings or we can come up with something that we can try to do to address this. And so that's what we did. Um, you can see on the second bullet, I, I don't know that I'd actually added it up until I started thinking about this presentation, but within my staff, we have nine instructors and we have over 175 years of experience in the industry. So as most of you in this session probably know, teachers come to the ATC, oftentimes they transition to teaching after that industry experience. So because of the seasoned staff that I have, they, I, they knew the direct need of the skills that students needed uh, and how they could pay off for them once they leave school and go out into industry. And so um, everything you're going to see is just a joint effort. It's, um, it's, it's not anything that's necessarily going to be super fancy, but it's just, just good stuff, good instruction that we felt like uh, that we know will benefit students once they leave and go into their respective career areas. Um, and like the bottom bullet there says, it just required us to put intentional focus on employability. Um, some of you probably remember COSA testing, things like that in the past where there were employability parts to those tests. And um, in my particular building, we are you know, mainly now just industry certs. Uh, and so that employability um, piece had just become embedded in the instruction and just kind of naturally assumed to be there. And while we were doing some of that, this actually required uh, our teachers to put an intentional focus on that because we had a goal and something that we were working towards. And so um, I think that's with anything. Uh, you can embed things and do things, but whenever it's an intentional purpose behind it, it's definitely going to reap more benefits from it. Um, so we came together this summer and we worked together to brainstorm things that make up a great employee. And we sat around in a circle literally for one whole day and we just mapped out, you know, what are things that it takes when you leave here to find yourself success? What led you to 25 years in the electricity field and being successful? Or what helped you as um, as a, a contractor, you know, that contracted homes and a builder, how did that help you? Like, what, what did it take for you to make it 25 years? Um, so we came up with a set of things and we began to think about how we could make this engaging and, and relevant for students. And we came up with the acronym CASH because um, like you or I, students understand money and um, they desire to make money. And so that's one of their main main things that they're always consumed about. If I'm working with a student on um, putting them in a work-based learning position, well, how much money is it going to be? What am I going to get paid? That That's what they understand. So we came up with the acronym CASH. And um, I'll pull that up here in just a minute for you. But the CASH is going to stand for characteristics, attitudes, skills, and habits. And so um, we divided all of those different indicators under those four headings. And so um, I'm gonna scroll. If you are on the grid, you can pull it up, but I also should be able to, you wanna see there is the actual image. And um, so we took the, the indicators that we came up with and we separated those into those four areas. And like I said, we chose cash because we want to be able to talk in terms that are relevant to students and something that they care about. And you can see we, we made this into posters. We kind of plastered it all over our commons areas. We've put it in all of our classrooms. We give students a copy in their, in their packets of information when that they have to turn into us. We've put them in the shops even. 
so that they're always seeing this. Um, as you can see underneath there, there's uh, most of those things are um, things that you or I would probably assume and just know, but not every student understands those things and, and their value in the workforce and why that it's why it's important. And so um, we came up with this graphic first. That was our first step. And then we started talking to the students about it and this process. Um, hang on just a second, let me get it. And so um, once we did that, we spent the first nine weeks just talking to them about it, giving examples, non-examples of, of what that looked like in their classroom and just discussing it with students, okay? So that was from um, from the first nine weeks. Then in, at fall break, when we began, began, began our second nine weeks, we began talking to them about how they were gonna be evaluated. And, and so now that is our goal that we will do that every nine weeks. And so um, teachers do weekly monitoring. I've also attached that as a, as a handout that you can look at. It's just a way for students, uh, for teachers to be able to keep weekly records on students on how that they um, are performing in their class in relation to these uh, four areas. Um, hang on just a second, let me go back. I don't think I pulled up the rubric there, but here's just a picture of the rubric. The actual whole entire rubric with all four categories is on the Ed Grid that you should be able to pull up at any time. Uh, but you can see when we, we when we developed this, we also came up with the rubric to where we want to categorize students as unemployable, employable, or sought after. And um, specifically, our goal as a staff has been to discuss the difference between just being employable and being sought after. And so we took each standard and we and we formulated that into the rubric and we attached that to points. So like I said, you can see the entire rubric in your um, in your breakout grid. Uh, I attached that where you should be able to pull that up at any time with the link. So once they had the rubric and they had the graphic and they knew what was going on, so then for nine weeks from fall break to Christmas, we were constantly talking to kids about the importance of getting to class on time, being prepared, especially with CTE. You know, they've got to have certain types of PPE. They need to have their safety glasses. They need to have certain types of shoes, clothing, things like that. All those kind of things are, are inside of that rubric. And so uh, some teachers, there's a checklist that I attach. Some teachers do anecdotal notes that they want to make weekly over their students so that they can remember whenever they talk to them at the end of this, at the end of the nine weeks. Um, so each teacher kind of does that a little differently as far as their week to week monitoring. OK, but that way they're not waiting nine weeks and then just making one decision. They're getting constant monitoring all the time. Um, so then our first big evaluation day was the week before Christmas break. And um, we kind of treated this exactly like it would be if they were in a performance review with an employer. And so um, teachers had tables set up, they had the rubric for the student, they had the score page, and they met with each student individually. And uh, they went over where each student where they were on the rubric. And um, I will say that that day was each teacher that came to me said that it was a very, very empowering day. It, for some of them, it even bled over into a second day because they had conversations with the students about how their performance in the classroom and what that looked like as an employee and how those same skills um, translate into what kind of employee they are in the future. And so they had conversations with students on uh, how well some of those had done. And then some of uh, the conversations were about, hey, you're a great welder, but you're not a very good employee right now. And, um, and it just led to a lot of conversations. I cannot tell you how much the teachers enjoyed um, and said so the students really participated in this. They asked questions. Um, and so their score turned out to be a summative assessment for them. So that put some skin in the game as far as um, 
it was connected to something. Um, and they knew what they're accountable for. They knew what, um, you know, what the expectation was, but then it made it real when the teacher was sitting with them and going over and saying, hey, you're great here, but you're not here. And, and this is what this could mean for you in the future. And um, like I said, I really can't explain how, how empowering it was for the students um, in some classes because they ask questions and like, well, what would this mean for me? And um, so we tried to compare this evaluation day to just, you know, this could mean raises, this could mean opportunities for advancement, uh, this could mean um, promotions, this could mean, this could also mean the lack thereof. So if you are not performing well in these areas, it really isn't an issue of how great you can do the technical skills, but um, if I can't count on you to be here, to be on time, to work with others, that was a huge one. I'm sure you saw that on there. Uh, communication was a huge one we get a lot. So those are the kind of conversations um, that we had with students. Like I said, what we anticipated being a one day for many of the teachers took two days because the kids talked about it. And it meant like they were very much involved in that and wanting to know what they needed to do differently. Um, the whole um, the whole mindset that we've been trying to instill in students is like that last bullet says that, um, you know, we want them to be sought after. So uh, where opportunities continuously find them so that um, you can go out and get a job, but or do you want to be the person that people are coming to you and opportunities are finding you because of the skill set you have, but then who you are as an employee? Because sadly, we, we do see students that have lots of skill sets, but they lack uh, some of these simple things uh, that you and I might automatically, you know, assume everybody has, uh, but they've not seen that modeled. They've not seen people routinely and consistently going to work and being on time and acting with integrity, all those types of things. Um, and so... Um, I've been in classrooms where um, a teacher was giving a student feedback on a project they were doing and the student already thought they knew how to do it and kind of, you know, blew up. And the teacher really just had to say, hey, Cash, you have to be able to take feedback. And if you want to be sought after, you have to apply that feedback and you have to correct your mistake. So, um, like I said, this is our first year um, in implementing this, but we... Um, we so far are, you know, have felt good about it and have been extremely excited, especially after that first evaluation day. We will have another one now um, at the end of the nine weeks and then at the end of the school year. Um, some of our classes have changed. Some of them did not. So we have new students that we'll be working on this with again this semester. So um, like I said, it, it may be a little premature to tell like if it's if it's effective as far as when they leave us, but we did feel like that um, we had to do something just simply because routinely we are hearing from all of our business and industry partners and people in our local and regional community that this is the aspect that people are missing just in general. And so um, I pulled up that again. Um, like I said, many of these um, students just really aren't seeing that modeled anywhere else. And so uh, hearing that from people that have the experience in the industry that knows what it takes to be successful in any of these fields. Um, and it isn't just like the hard tech classes. We do this with our health science as well. We talk, uh, I, I walked in and she was talking about um, integrity and with her nurse aid students about how you, you can't document that you turned a patient when maybe you didn't, and then they get bed sores because of it and those types of things. So um, we're just trying to tie everything back to this and so that they can couple that with the skills that they're learning in the content area so that hopefully when they leave us that they'll have, you know, lots of opportunities for advancement and some high wages and lots of employment opportunities coming their way. So... Um, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, if you all have any questions or if you have some feedback or if something came to you that you thought, um, 
would maybe be an improvement or something we could do differently. Uh, we are definitely looking to refine and tweak each time that we do this on how to make it better. Um, like I said, this was really just kind of originated with with our staff um, and just, I know we, I've been in different meetings and some people maybe think that these types of things are antiquated or outdated, but um, good soft skills are gonna be good for whatever career you go into. And uh, for us, um, I, like I said, we're excited to see what kind of benefits we see from our students as they transition into, um, into life beyond high school. I see somebody in the chat. Oh, that's Jerry. I like the scoring, sought after and motivate, motivating. Yes, um, we we thought that um, it would be helpful for students to see that there is a difference. You can be employable, but do you want to be the best? And what's going to set you apart from somebody else when you're going up against that person for a promotion or for an opportunity to move up into a different position, you know, depending on what you're going into. And so um, that's kind of where that derived from. And we're hoping that they will see that there is a difference in the two. Is everyone in here, is everyone in here in CTE? I see some of my people in here. No, not everyone. Well, that is all that I have. Um, like I said, if you do not have any questions, um, like I said, if something hits you later, or something that you think we could do, we'd be glad, we would love feedback because we are just, this is our first year doing this and um, we're hoping to continually improve it each time that that we go through it with students. Um, and like I said, just, just as something we can do intentionally to um, help students in this area. Crystal, I will turn it back over to you.